So 61% of Malawians live below the poverty line and the poverty rate in Malawi is 96%. If you're watching this video on, on Facebook and you are a Malawian, you're just uh, part of the 2%, 400,000 Malawians, in fact, who are on Facebook. Only 20% of Malawians uh, have access to internet. A huge squat of Malawians live in abject poverty. We are one of the po we are one of, if not the poorest country on earth. And in this series, I would like to propose some out of the box uh, solutions that Malawian politicians and people with power can use to escape the poverty uh, trap, to escape the un unemployment trap. And but for this video, I, I I'll suggest a few practical and easy to implement strategies that we can use as a country to escape out of the uh, out of the crisis that we we found ourselves in but first you know you know i love a good entry okay <laughs> All right, uh, my name is Bright Mohango, and uh, I am a Malawian, obviously a concerned Malawian, and uh, I'm passionate about things like this. And le let me start uh, <coughs> by, by addressing the question here uh, that we have in front of us. So I've, I've quoted a lot of statistics. You probably were bored listening to me babble about statistics like that. But then uh, let's go. First of all, I would like to introduce to you uh, the, the dependency theory uh, by by uh, Emmanuel Wellenstein, it's called it's also called the World Systems uh, Analysis. In that theory, he says that uh, the the there are essentially three three places a country can find itself in the, in the world. So you, you are either a core country or semi peripheral country and a peripheral country. So if you are on on the periphery, just just look down on my screen right here, and uh, and I will uh, I will show you what that is. So, if you are in the peripheral, uh, you you are poor. You provide cheap labor, and you are a market for processed goods from the coal. So the coal uh, countries are the rich ones. They uh, have all the technology. So you, the USA, the UK, and and most European countries and OECD countries, the semi-peripheral countries are in the middle. Uh, you would you would point to Brazil and maybe South Africa. These also uh, serve a similar role as, as those in the periphery. Before I, I bore you with the details of the theory, what I'm trying to say is that when you hear the presidents of Malawi address the nation, they say, oh, we would like uh, Malawi to break from being being a resource uh, country to, be, to becoming a, a manufacturing hub. It cannot happen. According to international political economy, we cannot just break out from our role as a a peripheral country. In fact, the rich countries cannot allow it. <laughs> Britain itself and the Americans itself cannot allow Malawian to be Malawi to become a rich country with with all the technology, because we then they would not have uh, uh, cheap labor, and then they would not have markets for the uh, the processed goods that, that they produce. If you want to buy this microphone, obviously it was designed in the U.S. If you want to buy an MRI scanner, you have to look to them. If you have to do it yourself, then you're going to find some people uh, not being happy. So what am I saying here is that we are trapped, according to the dependency uh, theory, we, we are trapped in this poverty uh, trough and we can't get out. The only way we can get out is if we embrace uh, our situation and get creative. So that is where my solutions, uh, my, so my solutions come in. So first of all, if you, if you listen to the news in, in, the, uh, in the UK, for example, let me just uh, pull up something. Uh, roll sound, sound. A fuel crisis in one of the world's richest nations. Petrol pumps in the UK are running dry because there aren't enough truck drivers to deliver the fuel. See, so uh, Jazeera says uh, there are not enough truck drivers in the UK to deliver the fuel, and this this is true for many uh, many countries. Apparently, in the US, there are no truck drivers to deliver supplies, and uh, in in the in the uh, in Europe in general, they will need up to almost two million drivers will be needed uh, by 2030. The, the crisis is so harsh. 
and that's not just it. You also have a, a crisis in, in this area. So Britain's so. National Health Care Service, they say, is short-staffed about 60,000 employees. And those MPs say it's a huge... <clears throat> so uh, Britain is also looking for nurses. It's also looking for staff in the NHS. And the, the shortages in the, in the healthcare industry go all the way to, to Norway, uh, Germany. The whole Europe is in some sort of crisis and they're looking for people. That's where we should come in. And that is my solution to say that since the, the, the theory says we are meant to provide cheap labor, then we should provide the labor. And that would be the solution to a lot of our problems as Malawi because uh, the people that we're going to send to these countries to be nurses, truck drivers, lawyer drivers are going to bring back a lot of money. So if you look at uh, the world in terms of uh, contribution by percentage by uh, GDP, Indians send back up to $79, $70 billion uh, back to the country from abroad. And this is followed by the, uh, the Chinese and the Filipinos. We, sh we, should, we, should, we should follow that mode. And you know what? We, we are so good with healthcare provision, you know? There was, there was even a myth back in the day that there are more Malawian doctors in Liverpool than there are in Malawi. We should train more doctors, we should train more nurses and flood Europe with our own people. You know, even if we don't have uh, uh, a lot of doctors and nurses, but we can, we can do something but by sending people abroad. They will bring, up, uh, bring back more money. We already have this uh, system uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, the labor from South Africa. So many Malawians who don't, don't do well in school, who are unemployed, if you go to Nzimba and the uh, room here in some areas like my, my own home village, Mlowe, the villages are empty. People have gone to South Africa to work uh, in the fi on the fishing boats, on, on the garlic farms there, on, on the white-owned uh, homes and, and franchises there. Even though the government of South Africa on paper uh, would like to, to, sh to tell you that they don't like uh, that labor, they are using cheap Malawian labor. They would have to pay more to their own citizens if they were to use their own citizens. So they are using us for cheap labor. And that money, uh, if, if you look at uh, Malawian development, if you go to the villages, most of the money that is driving development there is external, and it's, it comes from South Africa. We can do this on a grander scale. And and uh, on on that note, I would like to show you a clip from the Philippines. So the Philippines. Mia Faustino quit her job as a telephone operator at an insurance company to learn how to use a vacuum cleaner, make the bed in record time, and fry eggs in just the right amount of oil. Like her classmates, every morning Mia goes to Tesla, an educational institute paid for by the government where thousands of Filipinos are trained in skills that will help them find a job abroad as a domestic servant. Okay, there, there. The Filipinos have mastered the art of actually government sponsors its own people to go to school, learn to be a maid, make a bed, how to use the vacuum cleaner, then go abroad. So if you go to Qatar, Saudi Arabia, or the Middle East, the U.S., they, they're even exporting wives. I think I saw an island where the, the, the Europeans have no wives and they're importing wives from the Philippines. That's a model that they have. Yes, the, it's national humiliation. You, you have to have some pride. You cannot be that nation that uh, exports domestic servants and you're going to be known as uh, a servant exporter. But uh, I think 9% of the, F the Filipino GDP is from uh, people abroad that send back the money uh, back home. And what choice do we have? We are the poorest country on earth. And we, we can at least have the decency of using our youths and uh, sending them abroad. Uh, a truck driver in the, in the USA will get uh, uh, $20 an hour. Imagine 20,000 kwacha per hour. Many Malawians would kill for that job. I, I, I myself would hide, would hide my degrees and, and, and be a humble truck driver. In the U.S., some people say, oh, that is uh, exploitative. That's not good money. You know, the work is too much. But I know many Malawians who can take that job happily. If you go to the U.K., uh, a nurse, an average nurse, will get 1,600, 1, 2,000 pounds. That is 2 million. 2 million Malawi. Imagine that amount of money. So 
remember when we, when there was an interview at uh, at the the stadium of Subway where uh, they wanted healthcare providers and there were so many people that there was a stampede. That is what we are looking at. We should train so many people, send them out because we already have a population that is unemployed, a population that has got nowhere to go, a population that is mostly youth. We should embrace what we have. We have a special relationship with the the, the UK. We have a special relationship with the, the US. And, and our people are not known for being thugs when they go abroad. You, you've, you would never meet a Malawian who is a drug dealer, you know. You leave that to the Nigerians. So let's use the strengths that we have and... and Beat this trap, so we can bring back, uh, we can bring up uh, those one million jobs that the president keeps talking about. This is the way. This is the way to go. So let's train a lot of Malawians. You, you know, we we got a, a loan for uh, out the stadium that was seventy million dollars to build a stadium that for a long time was not used. We that was a concessional uh, loan from China, and then we got another ninety million dollars to build. Uh, the conference center, the the five star hotel. Do do you really think that a country that has got so much poverty and unemployment and and needs a five star hotel? There's so many people that should be left to private players. You know, there's Capital Hotel. There's so many hotels already, but we had to get a loan that much money to build a st- to build a stadium and a hotel. I could mention so many things that the government keeps wasting money on when they could be looking at solutions like these that are practical and can bring about real change. We, we, should, also, we should also not forget that we, we came to Malawi uh, around the 15th century uh, running away from places like the Congo where, where there was uh, much disease and strife and, and the, sl- the slave traders were beginning. You know, a lot of people f- around Zimba uh, came from South Africa running away from the Mfekani. We are trapped in Malawi. We we can use a better place. So if we can externalize our population to go to the UK, to go to Europe, it's it's better. There's better life there. Everyone in the world is struggling to go to these places. If we can have a special deal with the, with with our former colonial masters to say that this time we, we we need something on balance, you know, we give you cheap labor as you require. And and we get to get some peanuts at least, but those peanuts are going to help a lot of people in Malawi, and and that is my simple solution to escaping <coughs> poverty in Malawi, and to beginning to to fix the issues that we have with the youth unemployment and and yes again poverty. <coughs> Excuse me. So why why can we not do this? Why should we go and organize prayers for the nation? Why should the the, the government go out there and and not bring about such deals so <clears throat> it's a simple solution uh let's let's gang around uh, uh ideas like this you know you 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 fund you know malawi college of health sciences with a lot of people go in there train them go to the uk and you 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 provide head services there we already uh, speak the language to to a greater extent and our country is not Known for being, you know, uh, invasive in other country, we we pretty submissive. Send Malawians abroad in in these respectable jobs. We can even, you know, we, I, I would. I'm not trying to talk about us going the Filipino way, where we 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 send out our our, our sisters so that uh, the Arabs can can abuse them. No, no, no. Let's not let's not go that route. But we we have uh, we we can. We can actually get loans from the Europeans themselves. They they can they already give us a lot of funding to train uh, uh, healthcare providers. They can train our boys, and they can get them. They can use them. You know, they they need them, and we we have access. And it's our role, according to that theory that I spoke of, that we are always going to be uh, the country that provides them with cheap resources and cheap labor. Let's do. We already provide them with cheap resources. Why not provide them with the cheap labor? We already do this unofficially with South Africa. So that was my simple theory. And in this in this uh, series, <coughs> I don't want to be too academic and and too to pontificate too much. But I, I'm just thinking that there's there are practical solutions that we can we can uh, go into that can fix uh, the issues that we have. One of them is 
jobs. One of them is poverty, and this can be a good start. Again, uh, look up the uh, the theory, the dependency theory, the, the world systems analysis by Emmanuel Wilson, and you will see what I'm talking about. So uh, this is a good start, and uh, I hope uh, big people are, are listening. I know these things can, can seem like, you know, $70 million, you establish a government-funded driving school, you know? Youths with M with uh, MSc come if you pass you know in English you you learn how to drive uh, a heavy duty truck and then off you go you 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 can even do it on bond you know you go to the US you go to Europe you you get your salary there and the government gets its cut back and then be, that thing goes goes and goes and the lives of people are going to be you know improved. Uh, let me go back to the idea. You, so many people like the former president, uh, Peter Mtali, guy, they don't like that guy. He used to say, oh, we can turn Malawi into a Singapore. Many people forget that uh, Singapore, uh, China, so this, this country and, and Japan, are a few countries that have broken the curse from being on the peripheral to uh, moving towards the core in that theory that I showed you. <coughs> they, they are special countries. So, for example, China. Uh, the Chinese people don't own the land. The land is owned by the government, and the government makes a lot of money by selling that land to developers who then pay the government, and then they also invite his, uh, companies from abroad, mostly from Japan and, and the U.S., to say, come here, we have the land, and we'll provide you with cheap labor. So the people lost a lot of civil liberties. <coughs> Where I live in China... Uh, there's a lot of Korean factories, and many people say, oh, this used to be a village, so it, they, they uh, tore it down so that the factories could be there. Then we moved to these housing projects and so on. We, we cannot, we, we, we cannot uh, move to the level of China without trampling on a lot of civil liberties. So can we do that? Can we, can we have, a, to do that, you actually need a dictatorship to say, Move now. Here we're going to uh, give this uh, this land up to developers and and so on and so forth. So before that happens, maybe we can start with uh, this, the few solutions that are pretty palatable in my in my view. So yeah, that is uh, my my solution to the problem of poverty, the problem of unemployment, the problem of uh, us directing our. Uh, resources to uh, <coughs> anyway that is it and uh, again I'm gonna end this one with a song from a guy <coughs> I like this is uh, Sam Simakweli and this one is uh, Tawawona Mavuto All right, as usual, my name is Bright Mohango and uh, I make a lot of videos that are interesting and, and as I said, this is just the beginning of a series that I will be proposing some out-of-the-box solutions to simple problems that we have in Malawi. Peace. And cutting in three, two, one.